Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the tropics once more, where we've seen many more storms form, actually. We saw, I think, three separate storms form yesterday, Wilfred, Alpha, and Beta, which means we are into the Greek names. We're well on our way, and we're actually above 30 days ahead of 2005. We are almost surely going to break that record of most named storms this season. All right, now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I would also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know when do you think we will see Tropical Storm Gamma because that is our next tropical storm. So when do you think we will see that one? Let me know in the comments down below and give me a reason why and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and we're first things first taking a look at that two day graphical tropical weather outlook as we always do. As you can see there's a 40% chance up there in the northern Atlantic there. We'll talk a little bit about that on the five day outlook. As you can see there's actually a 0% chance there offshore of Africa. That's actually going to get 8% chance once we look at the five day outlook. So it's the three days after this two day outlook where that one starts to get a chance of developing. We have Tropical Storm Wilfred. Major Hurricane Teddy that is now a Category 4 hurricane, likely going to dodge uh, Bermuda there, but potentially going to impact areas in Canada or the northeastern United States. I want you guys to pay close attention to this one. I'll talk in a little bit about why that one actually has a chance to impact you guys. And then we have Tropical Storm Beta expected to become Hurricane Beta. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, take a look at the five-day outlook, and then we're going to take a look at our cone forecast for Wilford Beta as well as Teddy. So first things first, here's the five day outlook. And as you can see, we have a 40 to 60% chance up there for that Northern Atlantic system. That one's going to head generally southward. It could become a tropical storm of sorts, but it might not as well. We'll be tracking that one in the near future, but I don't think it's going to impact many areas at all. So it's kind of one of those ones that's going to be a non-factor, kind of like Alpha was. Alpha formed briefly offshore of Portugal and was gone like the snap of a finger, uh, but it just got us one name further into the season. Uh, so closer to breaking that record. Uh, as you can see, we still have a yellow there for that one coming offshore of Africa. I believe it has a 20% chance uh, coming offshore of Africa. That could go up or down, really depending. But I think it could go up, considering we're near the peak of the season. It's the main development region. Uh, that one could develop. Now, let's get into those cone forecasts here. We have Tropical Storm Wilfred is expected to kind of dissipate after Monday. So really, this one's going to be a non-factor. Uh, as we can see here, we have major Hurricane Teddy that's now expected to, for the most part, dodge Bermuda. Could bring some tropical storm conditions, but it's going to be far enough offshore uh, to where I don't really think it's going to impact you guys too much, especially compared to what we saw with Paulette. Now, you might be wondering, why did you say potential impacts for the northeastern United States or some portions of Canada if the cone forecast doesn't even bring it close? What we're going to do is I'm, we're going to move on and I'm going to show you exactly why I'm saying something a little bit different than what the National Hurricane Center is thinking. So here we are taking a look at our European Ensemble model and take a look at that. That's way further west than what even the National Hurricane Center is saying. And just a day or two ago, this model, the European Ensemble model, which is typically extremely good, had this storm even further west than what it's showing right now. It had it impacting Maine actually head on bringing major impacts, obviously, to all of the coastlines of the northeastern United States. So I said impacts, question mark, because it is a slim possibility here. And I want you guys to be aware that this model, just as quickly as this model has started to show it go further and further east, it could bring it back west. We see this time and time again. I want you guys to know that there is a slim chance that this one could come further west, especially since, you know, obviously my channel is based out of the United States. So I'm always going to talk about how these storms could impact the United States. I want you guys to be aware of that. All right, now let's take a look at that cone forecast for Tropical Storm Beta here. And as you can see, it's a tropical storm, but what, But by 1 p.m. tomorrow on Sunday, it could be a hurricane and then head straight for Corpus Christi. Uh, and then it's gonna turn directly, uh, very, very sharply actually, to the northeast. And it's gonna become a tropical storm shortly after that, but it's gonna ride the entire Texas coast and then potentially head towards Louisiana as well. Now, the low pressure center could be anywhere inside this cone, so it could come well onshore to Texas and then dissipate quickly, but the worst case scenario is going to be if it stays offshore because then it's not going to lose that intensity, and it's going to impact many, many more regions with those damaging impacts. 
All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for beta, the spaghetti model guidance for beta, the tropical storm intensity guidance for beta, and then we're going to start talking about impacts. Uh, tropical storm force wind probabilities, hurricane force wind speed probabilities, the arrival time of the tropical storm winds, the storm surge, the rainfall, all sorts of things like that. So here we are taking a look at that satellite imagery, and honestly this one is... Um, kind of redeveloping, it looks like it's starting to redevelop a little bit further eastward, which is interesting, but generally this one is supposed to start heading directly westward very, very soon. It's been on a track directly north, but it is going to head uh, westward from this point towards Texas, like I said. Uh, let's just go ahead and move on and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance, because it's going to be easier if I show you here. And as you can see, uh, it's going to head straight for Texas and then curve directly northeast or almost directly eastward there uh, and just ride the entire Texas coast and head towards uh, kind of where uh, Hurricane Laura went there in between Texas and Louisiana. It's very interesting to see a track this odd. It looks like a backward Z actually to me. Very, very awkward track and it's honestly going to lead to a lot of complications when forecasting this one because if any of these very sharp curves don't happen, you're looking at dramatically different tracks. Uh, so we're going to have to watch this one very, very closely, especially with the intensity as we take a look at that intensity guidance. As you can see, uh, it's expected to strengthen potentially to a category one there, kind of in between tropical storm and category one. But like I always say, I'm not going to hold this one to it can only be a tropical storm or category one. These golf storms can very much so surprise people. I've seen it so many times. Uh, so I'm not going to rule out the fact that this one can't be stronger than a Category 1. And I want you guys, if you live in these regions, to be prepared for that as well. Although it's looking likely that we will stay uh, either at a Category 1 or Tropical Storm. But again, uh, we saw the same thing with Sally. And sure enough, that's not what occurred. We saw a Category 2, almost Category 3 at points, uh, even though the models were expecting it only to be a Tropical Storm or Category 1. So uh, I'm not going to say this one can only be that, that strong. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the impacts. We're going to take a look at the wind speed probabilities, the arrival time of the wind speed, storm surge, and rainfall. All right, so here we are taking a look at that tropical storm force wind speed probabilities. And if you're in the greens, you have under a 30% chance of tropical storm force winds. If you're in the yellows to oranges, you have a 30 to 70% chance or about a 50% chance. And then if you're in those reds and purples, you have a 70 to 90% chance. And the only reason you'd be in that shade is if you are on a boat in the middle of the Gulf. So I guess you probably don't. But what we're going to see moving forward is that these are going to come on shore as they get a little bit more certain about the track of Tropical Storm or Hurricane eventually beta. All right, now here's the hurricane force wind speed probabilities. And as you can see, under 30% chance for everywhere so far. But as they get more confident that it will become a hurricane, this will go up. Uh, just like the tropical storm force wind speed probability one is. Now, most likely arrival time of tropical storm force wind speed, uh, so above 34 knots or 39 miles per hour. And most of the coastline is expected to see these arrive around 8 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, so Sunday night into Monday morning there, we're going to start to see these come on shore to, to Texas. And then likely uh, areas in Louisiana are going to start to see that at a little bit later than Texas as it curves northward up the coast. All right, now here's the storm surge map, and as you can see, a general one to three feet at least for anywhere in the red shade, uh, but as you get to the more middle portions like Corpus Christi, uh, and we see anywhere in between, I guess anywhere in between Corpus Christi and then uh, the Texas and Louisiana coast there, you're expecting two to four feet of storm surge. So quite minor to moderate storm surge is expected at this point. This could go up if we're expecting the storm to be stronger, obviously. So we're going to want to stay tuned for this. I'm going to be updating you guys very frequently on this, but you're going to want to stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for official guidance, of course, and they're going to be updating these maps very frequently as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the total rainfall that's expected at this point. If you're in the greens, you're under half an inch of rain. If you're in the blues, you're under an inch of rain. If you're in the purples, you're under two inches of rain. If you're in the reds, you're anywhere from two to four inches of rain. And if you're in the golds, you're four to even 15 inches of rain in those dark browns out there in the middle of the Gulf. So about 10 inches is possible for the Texas coast in Louisiana. This is not going to help, especially as you can see, eastern Louisiana is expecting to get quite a bit of rainfall from this one, five to 10 inches of rain, I would say. 
they don't really need the rainfall right now. Here's the excessive rainfall outlook so far, and this doesn't really extend through the entire storm, but at this point we have a marginal in the green and a slight 10 to 20% chance of excessive rainfall in that yellow so far. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what is the perfect outdoor temperature? And edited said, my perfect outdoor temperature has to be 45 to 55 degrees. And I thought nobody would say that type of temperature, but I love hoodie weather. So 45 to 55 is so, so good. Unless you're expecting a snowstorm to come through, then you would be kind of mad that it's only 45 degrees because it would obviously need to be colder for snow, unless you don't like snow, in which case it would probably be a good thing for you. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Mad Birds, Dan Hazard, Cindy Klein, and Mark J, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.